Hi guys, Dr. J here. Let's talk about a really interesting phenomenon. A donor starts with two kidneys, but since we remove one kidney, you would expect the donor to end up with 50% of the function they had before donation because each kidney provides 50% of the initial function. But in reality, after a while, the donor actually ends up with 70 to 80% of the initial function. So where did that function come from? Let's learn. In the normal human body, two kidneys function nonstop to clean and filter the body. So if two kidneys deliver total kidney function, each kidney must therefore provide approximately half or 50% of total kidney function. So what happens if one kidney is removed from the body? Logically, you're going to be left with 50% of your previous kidney function. True enough, in kidney donors, if you measure kidney function, you start out with 50% of total function. But after three to six months, you end up with 75% of previous total function. So what happened? Where did that function come from? The first clue to this phenomenon is suggested by x-ray images of donors before and after donation. This is an x-ray of a donor before donation. Of course, there is a right kidney and a left kidney. Now let's look at an x-ray three years after donation. As expected, the right kidney is gone since it was donated. But let's look at the left kidney, which the donor kept. Whereas before donation, the left kidney is about 250 cc's in volume, Three years after donation, it's grown to 300 cc's in volume. Another interesting x-ray. If you look at what happens to a donated kidney, so in this x-ray, the left kidney is going to be donated for a kidney transplant, and it measures 10 by 4 centimeters. Ten months after a transplant, an x-ray from the transplant recipient shows that the same kidney has now grown to 12 and a half by 5 and a half centimeters. Taken together, these images show that if a single kidney does the work of two kidneys, it grows in size. How does this happen? I'm going to give you a very quick tour of organ regrowth, a hot but incompletely understood topic. Let's look at the liver, and here's an x-ray of a liver. On the side here, I've pulled out the liver outline so you can read the x-ray more easily. But something is going on with this liver. It has ugly spots, which unfortunately are cancer. The way cancer surgery works in the liver, though, you have to remove this large portion of the liver to remove the cancer. Not the whole liver, but close. So after the surgery, in blue is the area of the liver that was removed, and the circle shows the remaining piece of liver, which is very small, maybe 20% of the original liver size. This is where it gets interesting. Look at the same liver two years later. It's completely regrown. To do this, the liver units must multiply. This is an example of regeneration. A whole new organ can grow back from a teeny bit. Okay, so we saw that a single kidney grows and gets more function as a result. Is this regeneration? Unfortunately not. To understand this, we need to look at kidney function. Briefly, the kidney is like a waste processing plant. And inside the plant are waste processing units such as this. Let's say this waste processing unit is good enough for a city block, but we want a plant for the entire city. You're not going to make a huge single processing unit like this. Instead, you're going to add many little units, which together can accomplish the larger job. And all these units will work together in the plant. The kidney also has waste processing units. And since it's a kidney, we'll call it a kidney functional unit instead of a waste processing unit. And each functional unit is like a miniature kidney, which delivers a little bit of kidney function. These functional units are called nephrons, from nephros, which means kidney in Greek. And this is actually why we call a kidney specialist a nephrologist. There are about 800,000 nephrons per kidney, each teeny nephron providing a little bit of kidney function. So together, all the nephrons add up to the total kidney function. If you look at kidney tissue under a microscope, you can see the nephron structures. The area encircled is the filter portion of the nephron, which you can clearly see in the kidney tissues. Similarly, you can see the tubes or tubules that carry urine in the nephrons. So, going back to the kidneys in the body, each kidney has many nephrons, which together add up to total kidney function. If one kidney is removed, then half the nephrons are removed, and since nephrons deliver kidney function, half the kidney function is removed. So you are left with half or 50% of the original function you had before the kidney was removed. But, as mentioned before, and this is where it gets intriguing, after a few months, you end up with 75% of original function. To recap in terms of nephrons, 
you lose half your nephrons. So you end up with half of the original kidney function, but somehow you end up with more kidney function, 75%. In other words, you gained function. But where did that function come from? If nephrons equal kidney function and you gain kidney function, there's only two possibilities. Either you gain kidney function because you get more nephrons, in other words, nephrons divide or regenerate, as in the case of the liver, or you keep the same number of nephrons, but you gain kidney function because each nephron provides more function. Which is it? The answer is that nephrons cannot multiply. So back to our dilemma. If nephrons cannot multiply, the correct answer is each nephron provides more function. So liver units multiply and regeneration of new liver tissue is possible. In contrast, nephrons don't multiply. Nephrons get bigger, which is called hypertrophy. Hypertrophy means growing bigger. For example, in a bodybuilder, muscles get bigger through hypertrophy. This explains the x-rays we looked at, showing a donor kidney three years after donation having grown in size a lot, which is similar to muscles growing in size. The kidney is stimulated because it is alone and becomes bigger, similar to muscles being stimulated and growing. To recap, take a liver, and let's say it has a cancer here. You cut out the part of the liver with the cancer and you're left with a remnant of liver. This can then grow back into a new liver. This is called regeneration, which is growing back new organ tissue. In contrast, you start out with two kidneys. You remove one through donation. Months later, the kidney grows in size. This is called hypertrophy, and by this process, the organ gets bigger. But it is not a new organ, just like muscles get bigger with weight training. So you could say that because of their great health, donors end up with a super strong kidney. So why did I contrast the liver to the kidney? Because it's key to understand that nephrons, once lost, can't come back. We know donors stay healthier than average after donation, but for a donor, it's important to not do anything that will reduce the remaining nephrons. Keeping nephrons, or more precisely, not losing nephrons, is the key to long-term kidney health.